Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I am at uh, the uh, Gettysburg National Cemetery in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. I am here for 100 Nights of Taps Gettysburg 2023. 100 Nights of Taps is a program in which every night starting on Memorial Day and ending on Labor Day, Taps is sounded at 7 p.m in front of the Soldiers National Monument in the cemetery, accompanied by a brief program. Uh, rather than listening to me explain the program, uh, it, it, the program itself does a pretty good job of uh, explaining what they're about, who they are, and, and why we're, they're doing what they're doing. So, I'm, I have recorded in its entirety 100 Nights of Taps for June 11th, 2023, and I am going to let you see and hear the program. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to 100 Nights of Taps, Gettysburg 2023, on this rather nice evening of June 11th, 2023. My name is John Tuscan. I'm the historian archivist the Lincoln Fellowship of Pennsylvania. The 100 Knights of Taps Gettysburg is sponsored by the Lincoln Fellowship of Pennsylvania and the Gettysburg National Military Park in partnership with Taps for Veterans and the licensed battle, uh, Gettysburg Licensed Battlefield Guides as well as the Eisenhower National Historic Site. I'm honored to introduce Ryan Welch from Bowie, Maryland, tonight's bugler. All of our buglers are volunteers. They come from all over the United States. The program could not exist without them. They come on their own dime. It's a great honor to have uh, Ryan with us this evening. came up from Maryland. <laughs> this evening, we walked through this beautiful national cemetery, guided by pathways that brought us here to Soldiers National Monument. While walking along the pathways, we were surrounded by the graves of fallen heroes and their enduring stories of sacrifice, sorrow, as well as extraordinary bravery. And those same pathways converge here to the place where in 1863, President Abraham Lincoln delivered the Gettysburg Address, one of the greatest speeches of all time. Gettysburg's National Cemetery pathways are our enduring pathways that guide us to our history. Our Enduring Pathway is our educational segment of the program, and tonight's Enduring Pathway has to do with this beautiful monument behind me. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this monument. This monument honors the Union soldiers of the Battle of Gettysburg and tells an allegory of peace and plenty under freedom following a heroic struggle. It is the first monument constructed here on the battlefield. Cornerstone was laid on July 4th, 1865. A dedication ceremony was held on July 1st, 1869. It included a ceremony. One of the speakers was General George G. Meade. Now the statue, the monument itself, the statue at top is the genius of liberty. She stands a foot, a 60 foot column. Mourning the dead, she holds a sword in one hand and a wreath of peace in the other, representing the constant struggle for freedom. 18 bronze stars stand atop, 18 bronze stars, one for each state around the column, uh, stand for each state that had a uh, soldiers fighting here in Gettysburg. At the sides of the pedestal are four marble statues. Over here to my right is the Union, American uh, Civil War Union soldier. He represents war. He's telling the story of the battle to Cleo, the muse of history. With a stylus on a tablet, she records the achievements in the battle and she writes down the names of the honored dead. On the back side, you'll see a, a man dressed in work clothes. He represents peace. He holds a mallet in one hand and a cogwheel at his feet. Then in back of Cleo, we have a woman representing plenty. She holds a sheaf of wheat and the fruits of the earth that typify peace and abundance as a soldier's crowning triumph. 
Now this monument is notable as being near the location where uh, President Lincoln gave the Gettysburg Address. But actually he stood uh, behind the other side of the monument. The latest research indicates it was right on this side of the iron fence up on the one uh, route of Denver. Now. Once again, I'm honored to welcome Ryan Welch tonight's Bugler. Ryan was born and raised in Houston, Texas, and currently resides in Bowie, Maryland. He joined the Air Force at the age of 18 and served for 10 years in the Air Force as an aircraft mechanic from 2005 to 2015. During military service, Ryan committed two tour, I'm sorry, completed two tours in Iraq in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2007 and 2009. He has played the trumpet since 1998 and continues to play music for leisure. Currently, Ryan's a PhD candidate at the George Washington University in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, and he plans a future career as a civil servant for the Department of the Navy. Again, Ryan, great honor to have you here this evening. We meet here in Gettysburg National Cemetery, so we shall never forget our brave American veterans. We remain steadfast in our dedication to the great unfinished work which those who fought here, as well as in many foreign lands, so nobly advanced. And we honor that they gave the last full measure of devotion so that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom and the government of the people by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Ago, we were honoring a different soldier buried here in uh, Gettysburg National Cemetery every evening. This year, we are honoring the unknown soldier buried here in Soldiers National Cemetery every evening, and we placed his image on a commemorative coin, which uh, our friend Brady here is showing. Now, this unknown soldier represents all the soldiers buried here. Now, here in Gettysburg National Cemetery, the 3,354 bodies buried. 979 lie here without a name or without a known state of origin. These soldiers can be found in sections 1, 14, and 22. However, not all unknown soldiers are buried in the unknown sections. If the state of an unknown soldier was known, perhaps by an insignia on his uniform that they didn't know, could not identify him, he would be buried as an unknown with that state. So New York down here, Pennsylvania, and so forth. Over here this evening, we placed a small flag by stone number nine in that unknown section if you'd like to pay your respects after the ceremonies uh, over this evening. Now with more than 40, uh, excuse me, with more than 40% of the Union Army's dead perished without names or war's end, the work of locating the missing and naming the tens of thousands of men designated as unknown would prove one of the war's most difficult tasks. I'd like to present Ryan with our coin this evening. Now we're here every evening, sound taps at 7 p.m. There's a different bugler to be here. We're here every evening until and including Labor Day. Please join us again if you can. Also, please join us 
on November 19th for our annual Dedication Day ceremony. The Lincoln Fellowship of Pennsylvania co-sponsors the commemoration of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address with the program here. Begins at the rostrum. We have music, a wreath lane ceremony, uh, speakers. There's also a U.S. naturalization and citizenship ceremony so we can uh, celebrate together with a group of new Americans. Now, in honor of the 60th anniversary of the centennial commemoration of the Gettysburg Address, this year's keynote speaker will be Susan Eisenhower, granddaughter of General Eisenhower. She's a great speaker. Uh, the General was the keynote speaker at the de uh, Dedication Day in 1963. You may recall he wasn't the first choice. President Kennedy was asked to come speak at that Dedication Day. He chose to go to Dallas. We are also excited to announce that Emmy-nominated actor Graham Sibley will also join us on the rostrum to present the Gettysburg Address. He starred in History Channel's three-night event series, Abraham Lincoln. We are also planning a tribute to opera singer and civil rights pioneer Marion Anderson, who had performed at the invitation of General Eisenhower in 1963. And also join us on the rostrum will be uh, historian Doris Kearns Goodwin, who you may have uh, read some of her work. She'll be on the rostrum with us that day as well. If you haven't already, we encourage you also to visit the David Wheels House down on the square, downtown Gettysburg. This is where President Lincoln put the finishing touches on the Gettysburg Address the night before the address. Of course, the speech that transformed Gettysburg from a place of death and devastation to a symbol of our nation's new birth of freedom. And finally, to conclude tonight's program, I'd like to invite any active duty military veterans, reservists, guardsmen, please come forward and stand with Ryan and myself so that you could be recognized. Veterans, one up, sir. Thank you all, and thank you everyone for coming out. As we uh, make our way over to Unknown Soldier number nine, uh, I just want to take a minute to thank everybody for watching and ask that you subscribe to my channel, like my video. Please feel free to leave a, leave a comment and to share this video. Thank you again, and we are about to pay our respects to unknown soldier number nine.